Well, I'm really excited to be able to work with, uh, with SBC. I've um, been following what they've been doing the last couple of years and they do things right. And so I think that the time is right for them to be able to really jump in and build something similar to what they've done here in the UK and the US. Um, you know, it's, it, it is really interesting times there after our May Supreme Court decision. So um, there's a lot of interest. There's a lot of people that are both from the legislative, regulatory side, operators, suppliers. They're, there's a, a real appetite to try to learn to see how they can make this work. Well, I think the interesting part about it is trying to be a big tent, as you might call it, uh, making sure that state lotteries are involved, that tribal gaming is involved, commercial gaming, regulators, policymakers, all of the people that kind of make up that ecosystem to uh, be able to come together, have some discussions, look at some models of what's worked and maybe what hasn't worked in other jurisdictions and to be able to, uh, to come up with some really concrete plans. Well, one of the things that I found interesting is that we've had fantasy sports there for a while. And I always thought that when sports betting was legalized that they would basically sell off maybe their player list and things like that. But actually some of those companies are now partnering as operating partners for actual sports betting in addition to the fantasy sports. So that surprised me a little bit. Um, and I think there's going to be a shift in the past. A lot of people in the U.S. have been um, a little uncertain about mobile gaming and what that entails, but I think there's a little bit more understanding that that's going to have to be part of the equation. So I think you'll see more states that maybe haven't adopted that for casino or poker will probably adopt it now for sports betting. Well, the way things are sorting out in the U.S. for all iGaming in particular, but particularly for sports betting, is it's going to be land-based operators that are going to be the ones uh, that are uh, going to be authorized to be licensed for that. So to do that, um, and, and they have no experience with it, so for them to develop some partnerships with other companies that are knowledgeable, have the infrastructure, have, uh, you know, they'll, they'll be a, for sure, marketing partner out to their players, uh, the operators will, but the, um, you know, it's, it's important for them to, to partner because they really don't have any experience in this area. What's interesting in the U.S., it is going to be a state-by-state -state, uh, rollout. And we had, in 2018, we had, during the legislative sessions, had close to 20 states that basically said, you know, if, if this comes to pass, we want to be able to participate in that. So we've only had, I think, five states so far, five or six states that have authorized it so far. So in January, when the legislative sessions uh, seasons start up again, I think you're going to see a range of those, many of those other states say, okay, let's get serious about this and, and try to get something passed. So I think there's going to be a lot of activity between January and uh, mid-year. So we'll have a better sense by next summer how many players are actually going to be in there from the various states that will have passed it. Mm -hmm.